All right, Ronan MMA, welcome back to the channel. Now, Dana White and Israel Adesanya fans continue to cope and seethe and make excuses on behalf of Israel Adesanya. I know this topic has been talked about a lot, but last night, Dana White did a press conference after the Contender Series where he was asked about some of the statements that he made uh, in the immediate aftermath of UFC 293. One reporter in particular asked him, you know, is there too much being said about Israel Adesanya's poor performance uh, compared to Sean Strickland's good performance. And this is what Dana White had to say about that. And on that note, do you think that maybe there's too much attention being paid to Izzy's poor performance and not enough towards Sean's good performance? No, I think there's there's two sides to that. Listen, Izzy did not look good that night. He looked slow. He looked lethargic. He looked whatever. And, you know, what, what a lot of people are saying, that's right, but uh, Strickland felt it, knew it, stayed right in his face, and went after it. And, and you, like I was just telling, uh, you know, him earlier, it's, it, it's like he fucking felt it. And he couldn't wait to get back out of that corner to get back in there and, and win that title. Now that you guys have seen Dana White's answer, because he also later on in this uh, press conference goes on to give the media a ton of shit for misquoting him and saying things that he did not say that he absolutely in fact did say. But um, regardless, we'll get to that later. He continues on with the slow, lethargic, blah, 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 blah. And the, re the, o the only credit that he really gave Sean Strickland was that Sean Strickland noticed Isra Adesanya was these things took advantage of it, kept pressing him, kept going after him, and was going to win that world title. Sean's, dude, I can't stand this shit. Sean Strickland stood in, Jesus Christ, Sean Strickland stood in front of this motherfucker for 25 minutes, within range, okay? If Sean Strickland's in range to land the shit that he was landing, Israel Adesanya is also, by default, in range, because he's got a longer reach than Sean Strickland, okay? I don't understand this narrative at all. But I want to go into it in a little more detail with some fight statistics because they're all available to us and it's not hard to look up, okay? Israel Adesanya has been in 11 straight title fights. Eight of them went past the fifth round. So he has seven of them go to decision. Pajeda finished them in the fifth round with two minutes less. So 23 minutes or longer, basically. Um, eight of them went that long. Three of them he finished, Whitaker the first time, Costa, and Pajeda the second time. Out of those eight that went into the fifth round at least, and seven of them went the full distance, this is the fourth most strikes he's ever landed in a title fight. But it just is. He only landed more. Again, he landed two more strikes against Vittori. I think he landed like 116 against Cannoneer. And then in the Gastelum fight, he landed over 100 there as well. This is the fourth most he's ever landed on an opponent. Ever. Now, to credit Sean Strickland, because he deserves it, I feel as though a lot of those significant strikes are checked kicks. Okay, but they counted those in the Pajeda fight also. They counted those in the Blahovich fight also. He landed less against Jan Blahovich, which he lost. He landed less against Yoel Romero, which some people think that he lost and was a shit fight. He landed less against Robert Whitaker in the second fight, which a lot of people also think that he lost. And he landed less against Alex Pereira in their first fight. Th the only real fight that ever got criticized out of those four that I just mentioned was the Yoel Romero fight. O other than that, as long as he's winning, Dana White is praising him dominant. He looked phenomenal. He's just so good in there. It's just bl like blah, 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 all this shit. None of those same adjectives, none of those same praises get pushed towards Sean Strickland, though, even though he did what Israel Adesanya usually does to people, which is make them miss and he, while he's landing, right? Even in the LX Pereira fight, he talked about how Israel Adesanya looked very good up until then, and that's why they're going to do the immediate rematch, because he was on his way to winning that fight, and, you know, he looked really good in the opening rounds, and blah, 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 and all this fucking bullshit, dude. So the fourth amount, this is the fourth most strikes he has ever landed in a fucking title fight out of 11. But the narrative is he's slow, he's lethargic, he couldn't get off, which is another one that drives me crazy. Couldn't get off. I see this from a lot of people in the comment sections that are Ezra Adesanya fans. Well, what he was just running. I don't know what he was doing. He wasn't fighting like he usually fights. He was fighting exactly how he usually fights. As a matter of fact, Sean Strickland took away one of the things that Israel Adesanya usually has to do, which is to get in range. Sean Strickland went, nope, I'll come there for you, dude. You're already in range. Now what? Out of all of those 11 title fights, <clears throat> he threw the most strikes he's ever thrown against Sean Strickland. You can go look up these statistics, man. They're on the UFC's website. 
He, ne- he has never thrown more in a title fight than he did on Saturday night. So he couldn't get off. What does that mean exactly? Because what that, to, to me, that sound he couldn't land, is what Dana White's trying to say. But he couldn't land, not because he looked any of these things, because he was clearly getting off. He landed, well, pause, he landed 270 fucking strikes, or pardon me, threw 270 strikes. Sean Strickland threw less strikes than he did, but outlanded him. He even threw less strikes in the Calvin Gaslam fight than he did in this fight. The only difference is, is that Sean Strickland is defensively fucking amazing. And Israel Adesanya was not able to hit him, despite Sean Strickland being right in his face from start to finish. He was right fucking there the whole time. He threw all of the same shit that he throws in all of his other fights. As a matter of fact, he threw more question mark kicks in this fight than I've ever seen him fucking throw ever. Because he ran out of his he ran out of tricks, dude. He didn't know what to do. He ran out of tricks. So he started spamming his most fancy shit. It's wild to me, man. People are not giving him credit at all. And it's fucking bullshit, dude. The the credit that Dana White did give him is garbage, man. Oh, he noticed that. So he just kept fuck off, dude. No, he noticed. This motherfucker can't hit me because my defense is too good. So I'm gonna keep pressing him. And then after the third round. I'm not all that concerned about his knockout power. Now, obviously, he's still dangerous in the fourth and fifth round, but, like, the opening rounds are the most dangerous for Israel Adesanya. I don't think he has a finish past round two. I could be mistaken. Maybe in his UFC debut. Yeah, I I don't know. At least in title fights, I don't think he does. I think Whitaker was round two. I think Costa was round two. And Pajeda was round two. So, past that, he's not really, like, a crazy knockout threat. But this fucking, this bullshit narrative that he couldn't get off. My guy threw more strikes in this fight than he has ever thrown in his life. It wasn't that he couldn't get off. He couldn't land, okay? And that's not because he was slow and lethargic. Because if he was lethargic, he wouldn't have thrown 270 strikes in this one. But only threw 233 against Calvin Gaslam or 236 or whatever it is. No talk of him looking slow and lethargic in that one. Because Calvin Gaslam was getting hit a whole lot, right? And even in all the other title fights where he's landed less than this, we've never really, like the Romero fight, Dana White was like, yeah, that was a shit fight. But other than that, he's never made these kind of excuses, even in the Blahovich fight, which he lost. You know what I mean? They chalked it up to Blahovich's wrestling, which is retarded because Blahovich won at least four of those rounds and th- the first three were exclusively on the feet. But this 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 bullshit's never been talked about. And he f- he's... Again, dude, I keep saying it, but he threw more in this fight than he's ever fucking thrown in any fight that he's ever had uh, in, in, in championship fights. He landed the fourth most he's ever landed on any opponent in title fights. Slow, lethargic, couldn't get off. Fucking kill me, dude. Enough of this shit. He didn't look any... Go watch the first round again, you fucks. Go hear his body kicks, go hear his leg kicks, go see his right hands. They were fast. They were snappy. The difference is, is that those strikes that I'm talking about came before Sean Strickland backed him up past the black line, up against the cage. It is what it is, man. Sean Strickland's better defensively and more accurate with his shots. Israel Adesanya, you know, a lot of people talk about he is very accurate, comparatively speaking. Not compared to Sean Strickland. He's just not. He throws a lot more than he lands because a lot of the shit that he is throwing is not necessarily that shot he wants to land. It's the follow-up shots. It's the shots after that. Not slow enough. And the statistics prove it, man. A guy who's lethargic and flat and all this shit isn't throwing more strikes than he's ever fucking thrown in a title fight. That's just not happening. So I'm irritated about that shit. And I wasn't even going to talk about it again, but Jesus fuck. Dana White's press conference was irritating to listen to. Brutal. Then, you know, he goes on to talk about, um, he gets asked about the rematch. And he gets triggered saying that the media said things that he didn't say. Okay. Last thing, you were asked about a rematch. You said, that sounds right. But you got, you know, Drinkus out there saying, hey, what about me? You got Hamzat and Costa coming up in Abu Dhabi. You had Jared Cannonier there as a backup. So all those seem like viable options. Are you considering all those or do you still feel like the fight to make is the rematch? Well, I think if you remember that night, people said, well, what do you think? You think it's a rematch? I said, yeah, the rematch sounds right. And I never did I say, I saw the stupid fucking shit that was written, you know, by all these stupid fucking websites. Um, you know, never once did I say, yes, we're going to fucking do this rematch. I said, no, yeah, the rematch sounds, you know, we'll see what happens. There's obviously lots of options out there. 
and we'll see what happens. But yes, I'm still not opposed to an Israel rematch. We'll see how it goes. Hi, Dan. Okay. Hey. That they said, oh, I said the rematch is next. I didn't fucking say that. I said, yeah, sounds good. It's whatever. And he goes, uh, I'm not opposed to an Israel Adesanya rematch. That's the, what the end of what he says. Well, Dana, your post-fight press conferences are all on YouTube, right? On the UFC's page and many others. You can go back and listen to what you said. Quote, I think you do the rematch. Absolutely. You know, traditionally we see dominant champions get an immediate rematch, right? But Israel just had one of those with the Pereira fights. So do you kind of, I know this is a Tuesday question, but do you sort of think, well, let's just book it again because Israel looks so off? Or do you just sort of see how the division plays out and leave Israel on the side for a moment? No, I, th I think you do the rematch. Absolutely. I mean, the rematch is, is, is interesting. Uh and then he goes on to say how it's interesting and gives the same bullshit excuses. And this is why it's interesting. Because Israel Adesanya was slow and lethargic and he couldn't get off. Despite throwing more than he's ever fucking thrown. Okay. You did say these things, Dana. And we've got the clips to prove it. I don't understand this shit, man. He's, he's been very weird and grumpy in the last few press conferences. I know he's getting old, but Jesus fucking Christ. Another thing that drove me nuts is the guy will not give... He, if you're not going to give Sean Strickland credit for the fucking phenomenal performance that he put on, him making your cash cow, your favorite fucking fighter look like shit, okay? And by the way, the whole Dana White privilege shit and people, dumb people, thinking that it has a goddamn thing to do with fucking race, you need to shut your goddamn mouths, okay? Because Israel Adesanya is now getting, or seemingly will be getting, another immediate rematch, despite having zero defenses of this reign, despite going one and two in his last three, despite being four and three in his last seven. Undeserving as fucking all get out. The only color Dana White cares about is green. So shut the fuck up with that shit. But either way, he won't give Sean Strickland credit for the fight uh, to the extent that he should be. And he won't give Sean Strickland credit for, holy fuck, dude, I keep getting tongue, tongue twisted on his name. For the star power that he seemingly possesses, okay? I didn't think that he was that popular, right? And then we see the way the Australia crowd behaves towards him. And I knew that he had a pretty decent presence online and not even necessarily because of his own social medias, but thank fuck people like the schmo, Helen Yee, and Nina Drama as annoying as she can be. These people push him out like crazy. They are willing to give him a platform when a lot of these other media members don't want to because they don't like the things that he says. And I feel as though Sean Strickland has amassed himself a very nice fan base. Not nice in the fact that we're all extremely, genuinely nice people. But I mean like sizable. It's a very sizable fan base. That has grown genuinely. And when Dana White gets asked about the fact that Sean Strickland's post-fight interview in the cage. And I think at the time it was 2.1, but now it's about 2.6 million views on YouTube. He chalks it up to him being a big underdog. Do you think it's just people are wondering what the hell's gonna come out of his mouth, or is it star power? I don't know. Or? I just think I, I think uh, I think people love an underdog. He was such a big underdog in that fight. He came out and won. And you know, like she was saying earlier, uh, you know, people are like, "Oh, don't take away the fact that he, that that Strickland won the fight." And yeah, good for him. I love that shit. I, I love I love the support he's getting. It's it's great. Um, Whereas, do two uh, UFC 292, Sean O'Malley, the word that continuously got shoved down our fucking throats. All week, all fight week, Sean O'Malley's walkout song, post-fight press conference, superstar. He's a superstar. He's a fucking superstar. Okay, dude. Well, Sean O'Malley's post-fight interview after UFC 292 did about 586,000 views. Sean Strickland's four times that right now, off the top of my head, roughly four times that in a few fucking days, dude. Sean O'Malley's interview has been up for at least three weeks. Do you know what I mean? But when Sean O'Malley gets all this attention, all of this, whatever, it's Sean O'Malley's a superstar. But when, and despite the fact that Sean O'Malley was also a pretty sizable underdog and there were not a whole lot of people that were picking him to win. But when Sean Strickland fucking eclipses him in terms of views, it's because he was a big underdog and people love an underdog story. Okay, dude, great. It can't be that people find him fucking hilarious or that people find it unbelievably refreshing to hear somebody who's honest and genuine and just says what they think all the time or the fact that 
we can relate to a guy who shows up to fight week in a white tee and blue jeans more than we can relate to a guy that shows up with face tattoos, rainbow hair, or in Israel Adesanya's case, a woman's fur coat, pearl necklaces, and a fucking McLaren or whatever. Like, do you know what I mean, dude? Sean Strickland's relatable. He just is. And I feel like to a massive chunk of the fan base, he is relatable. He is genuine. It's very clear that he is sometimes too honest. Do you know what I mean? He's funny, naturally. And none of that gets mentioned. It's the underdog shit. Fuck off, dude. It's so ridiculous, man. Sean O'Malley's a superstar with four times less views. Okay. Also a large underdog. Not to the same size, but still. Sean Strickland only got all those views because he's a massive underdog. Like, it's just fucking weird, man. Give the guy some goddamn credit because he deserves it. Like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. I will see you at the next video. Bye-bye.